Okay, so we left off talking about morphogenesis and how the bicoid protein helps the um, fly to develop the head and the tail regions and how apoptosis also um, is involved in morphogenesis and how it causes the webbing in between our fingers to those, those cells to die. So the last little bit we are going to look at is the, some genes that are actually uh, used to actually turn on and off certain um, genes to cause this development, head and tail, and this pattern formation. They're called homeotic genes. This is looking across species, there are many similarities in the genes controlling development. So clearly the bicoy protein gene is helpful in development of the fruit fly. And so there are other genes that if you look from the fruit, fruit fly to the mouse to the humans, that there are some similarities in those genes. So a homeobox is a DNA sequence found within genes that are involved in the regulation of patterns of development. So we're talking about morphogenesis. So these homeobox genes are involved in morphogenesis. Genes that have a homeobox are called homeobox genes and form the homeobox gene family. And so I'm looking at this. Turn the page here. You have the fly and the mouse. And before we talk about the fly and the mouse, because this is what was in the handout that I had given in class, um, the most studied and most conserved group of homeodomain proteins are the Hox genes, which control segmental patterning during development, so different segments um, uh, in the um, organism. So this is not all homeodomain proteins are Hox proteins. Many distantly related eukaryotes, such as plants and yeasts, also have these Hox genes, these regulatory sequences. Such similarities indicate that the homeobox sequence is very useful in development and arose very early on in evolution and has been conserved for hundreds of millions of years um, because all different types of organisms, um, yeast and plants, um, very different organisms, yet have similar genes. Um, let's go through and look at... Um, Let's, let's look at a drawing here. If you flip your sheet over, I'm going to draw down here and draw some things. I'm going to color code some things and draw some things. So let's say here, this is your DNA. And this is your gene. And let's say this gene is running out here. Let's get a pen here. So these, let's say this gene is a homeotic gene. So I use the word homeotic gene. So this is a regulatory gene to determine pattern formation. Okay, so that's what a homeotic gene is. Now, what happens is we just read or just talked about how the homeobox, let's go both, a homeobox is a DNA se sequence found within genes that are involved in the regulation of patterns of development. So going to this picture, here's your gene. A homeobox is a, a gene found within the gene. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's use the blue here. So let's say within the gene, so it's part of the gene right here, this is your homeobox. So as we just wrote, it's part of a homeotic gene. So that's what we're writing. That codes for a part of a protein called the homeodomain.
So what happens here is that your, this is your gene has that special part of it. So then if transcription happens of that gene, so we go through transcription. So here's the start of the gene. All right, and the end of the gene. So this is your mRNA. So now you have, let's go with that same gene, you have that homeobox part of the mRNA. So then pretend like um, mRNA processing occurs and next we get translation. And translation gets you get your finished protein and then it folds on itself and so on and becomes the right shape. So let me just show you here. So let's say here, this is the right shape. And part of that, part of this amino acid chain, so this is going to be your protein, part of that amino acid chain is going to have the homeobox region. So here is the start of the protein. So let's say right here is the homeobox part. Let's say that's that part of it. This is called the homeobox is part of the gene, so the part of the protein that was coded for by that is called the homeodomain. And the reason why it's curved here is the interaction between the R groups. This is why it has the shape that it does and so on. So this is your protein. All right, so this protein, let's say, acts as a transcription factor. turning on other genes involved in development. <clears throat> so let's look at, so let's say you have a another gene, so I'm going to do DNA in green, or in black again. So here's Let's say this is DNA and another chromosome. So this DNA made, coded for, and made this protein that's going to act as a tr transcription factor. So this is DNA and another chromosome. And let's say here's your gene. And this is, let's say, the promoter right here. So this part is the promoter. And this is another gene involved in development. And so what happens is this is going to act as a transcription factor. So what do transcription factors do? They bind to the TATA box, like, you know, in the promoter region. And so when this comes over to bind, this part, the homeodomain part of the protein, is going to bind to the promoter. I can't really make it the right sh same shape. Pretend like this is the same shape as this. And... So let's draw a pic draw this, that this is coming over here. And the homeodomain part binds with, all right, to the promoter. So let's write that here, the homeodomain allows it to bind to the promoter. And so then that allows other transcription factors to come and bind. And then eventually what to bind that's going to start the whole process, and that is RNA polymerase. So let's draw here RNA polymerase binds. Then RNA polymerase binds and transcribes the gene. All right, and so therefore, 
This, this homeotic gene makes a transcription factor. That homeo box allows it to turn on other genes involved in development so that those genes can be turned on and so on and so forth. And so that is kind of in a picture of what we were talking about here with the homeo box and so on. I wanted to give you an idea of uh, a mental idea of what was going on there. So there are certain um, homeo domain proteins that are, that are encoded for by these Hox genes. So the homeo domain proteins are proteins that allow it to bind to these genes to turn on genes to a, a, for development. So not all Hox genes are homeotic genes. Not all of them control body parts. However, most are involved in development. Research has revealed that the homeobox encoded region is part of the protein that functions as a transcription regulator. So that's what I tried to show you in the picture here, that the homeobox encoded region, homeobox encoded region is involved in transcription regulation because it's part of the protein that allows it to turn on the genes when it binds to the, to the other genes. The shape of the encoded region allows it to bind to any DNA segment, but by itself it cannot select a specific sequence. The variable regions within the whole protein allow it to interact with other transcription factors and enhancers within the DNA. So this allows it to bind to the promoter, but then the other transcription factors that come and bind, um, it's, you know, it has to be the whole package. It's not just that protein or that part of the protein, but it's the whole thing that allows these guys to bind and so on that eventually allows the RNA polymerase to, to bind. So in this way, the homeobox genes work to switch certain developmental genes on and off. And so these are just special collections of homeobox genes um, that regulate the transcription and development uh, of the organism. And so it's involved in morphogenesis, these genes. Okay. And this is where I'll leave off. So we will look at that article um, tomorrow and talk about this, about this picture and how it relates to these things. Nice, short, and sweet.